Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, September 11th, 2011. We're at the peak of the hurricane season, and on this date, three major hurricanes have hit the United States. Edna in 1954, Carla in 1961, and Aniki in 1992. Today's trivia question is name the states that these hurricanes hit. Again, Edna, Carla, and Aniki. The answer will be given at the end. Since yesterday, we've had just five sea flares. A couple of weeks ago, this would have seemed like very high levels of activity, but after the excitement of the last few days, this seems a relative calm. So let's take a look at the sunspot regions and see why the sun has calmed down. Currently, we have five officially numbered regions on the disk. Plus, there are three unnumbered regions, two of which have come up in the last 24 hours. Let's start with region 1283 in the northwest. According to NOAA, Region 1283 has lost about 5% of its area overnight. However, it's so close to the limb, it's really hard to tell which direction it's going in. All we know is that over the next 24 hours, we're going to lose the region over the northwest limb. However, we do know that it has been the source of most of our activity in the last few days, including the two medium-sized sea flares that have just occurred. Next, let's take a look at Region 1287 in the southwest. According to NOAA's numbers, it's lost about 20% of its area in the last 24 hours. And you can see some evidence of that in the fact that the trailing spots have disappeared entirely. However, the leading spot doesn't look all that different. Next, let's take a look at Region 1289 in the northeast. This seems to have grown by about 20% overnight. You can see that the leader spot is much larger than yesterday, and there are more spots in the trailer region. However, some of those spots are much smaller and less significant than the ones that we saw yesterday. Region 1290 in the south has grown since yesterday. It's spread out a little more, but there are more spots, and some of the spots seem to have grown. There is a newly numbered region near disk center in the north, region 1291. I pointed this region out yesterday when it had two medium-sized spots. However, today the spots have decayed quite significantly, and their total area is only 10 millionths of the solar disk. We have three as yet unnumbered regions on the disk. The one in the southeast I pointed out yesterday, and it's still there and may have grown a little bit in the meantime. We've had two new regions rotate over the northeast limb in the last 24 hours, one of which looks fairly substantial. But these just seem to be harbingers of the much larger region due to come over the northeast limb in the next 24 hours. So all in all, over the last day, solar activity has been low to medium and seems to be quieting down from the dizzy heights of the last few days. Let's see if we can pull all this together by looking at the um, evolution of these regions using the sunspot and magnetic movies from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. First, the sunspot movie shows the evolution and appearance of the, some of these sunspots, and then the magnetic movie shows how the magnetic fields of each of these interact with one another. There is not a lot going on in the Transition Region movie. You can see yesterday's coronal mass ejection out in the northwest, but after that, the sun seems to quiet down quite significantly. However, the low temperature coronal movie at about 600,000 degrees shows some interesting features. First, you can see this new region coming over the northeast limb is very extensive and very bright. Much more interesting than that is the huge plume of plasma that stretches above the region. I don't think I've seen anything like it before. It stretches right to the edge of the field of view. Plume can also be seen quite clearly in the high temperature X-ray image from the GOES SXI instrument. However, here I'd like you to concentrate on the large coronal hole that's now in the Western Hemisphere and will shortly start affecting us with a high-speed coronal wind stream. Even though the flare situation seems to have quieted down quite a bit, we're still seeing fairly impressive coronal mass ejections, as you can see from the SOHO coronagraph. The solar wind parameters seem to be quite variable at the moment. The velocity has been steadily increasing over the last 24 hours. The temperature peaked for a short time, but then has returned to its more normal 100,000 degrees. And the density has steadily dropped since a peak earlier today. All this variability is causing havoc with the magnetic field of the Earth. Here is a simulation of the Earth's magnetic field over the last 24 hours. On the left we have the Earth's magnetosphere, uh, with blue showing uh, northerly um, directed field and red showing southerly directed field. On the right we have the solar wind pressure on the magnetosphere. 
with blue being low pressure and red being high pressure. See how the Earth's magnetosphere is sometimes compressed down to a relatively small ball as the solar wind parameters change. You can also see how much the pressure changes on the magnetosphere as the temperature, density and velocity of the solar wind change. The high energy electron flux seems to be recovering slowly from its rather strange behaviour of the last couple of days. And we seem to be returning to normal proton conditions as the proton events have ended. The auroral zone seems to have calmed down quite significantly over the last 24 hours. You can see that the KP index is decaying back to quiet conditions, even though we did have one period of storm uh, force in the last 24 hours. So in summary then, the X-ray background has remained at the B4 level, the sunspot number has increased to 77, radio sun intensity is at 116 solar flux units, the solar wind speed has gone up to over 600 km per second, but with a density of much less than one proton per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions at the moment are variable. My forecast for the next 24 hours is that C flares are likely, M flares are possible, but I think X flares are becoming increasingly unlikely. Sunspot number will probably ease higher, CMEs remain likely, the solar wind speed will remain high, and we still have a possibility of a minor geomagnetic storm. From the composite coronal image we see that the large region in the northeast should start coming over the limb in the next 24 hours. But after that there's nothing due for four or five days. If you'd like to find out more about what's happening on the Sun, follow some of the links in the description box below. If you'd like to see earlier editions of the Sun Today or some of my other videos, go to my channel, they're all listed there. If you'd like to subscribe, you'll be more than welcome to do so. Now for the answer to the trivia question. Hurricane Edna hit Massachusetts in 1954. It was a Category 3 hurricane. Hurricane Carla hit Texas in 1961. It was a Category 4 hurricane. Hurricane Iniki, was also a Category 4, hit Hawaii in 1992. So the correct answer to the trivia question is Massachusetts, Texas and Hawaii. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.